The Lord be with you. We welcome you to worship on this uh, fourth weekend after Pentecost and a happy Father's Day Eve as well. As we gather this evening, may indeed our growth in Christ continue steadfastly. We ask everyone to fill out the cards there in your pews, and after the service, you can leave those cards in the offering plates at the entrances to the church. Before we do anything else, why don't we take a moment to greet the folks around you. Our service today is Divine Service Setting 4, printed in your bulletin or beginning on page 203 in our hymnals. We now begin with our opening hymn, hymn number 500. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. 
Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our intro it from Psalm 92. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High. The righteous flourish like the palm tree and grow like a cedar in Lebanon. They are planted in the house of the Lord. They flourish in the courts of our God. They still bear fruit in old age. They are ever full of sap and green. To declare that the Lord is upright, he is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, since you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Our Old Testament reading for this day comes from the prophet Ezekiel in chapter 17. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will take a sprig from the lofty top of the cedar and will set it out. I will break off from the topmost of its young twigs a tender one, and I myself will plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain height of Israel I will plant it, 
that it may bear branches and produce fruit and become a noble cedar. And under it will dwell every kind of bird. In the shade of its branches, birds of all, every sort will nest. And all the trees of the field shall know that I am the Lord. I bring low the high tree and make high the low tree, dry up the green tree and make the dry tree flourish. I am the Lord, I have spoken and I will do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle lesson comes from St. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians in chapter 5. We know that if the tent, which is our earthly home, is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this tent we groan, longing to put on our heavenly dwelling, if indeed by putting it on we may not be found naked. For while we are still in this tent, we groan, being burdened, not that we would be unclothed, but that we would be further clothed, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. He who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. So we are always of good courage. We know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we are of good courage and would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each one may receive what is due for what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we persuade others. But what we are is known to God, and I hope it is known also to your conscience. We are not commending ourselves to you again, but giving you cause to boast about us, so that you may be able to answer those who boast about outward appearance and not about what is in the heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ controls us because we have concluded this, that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all, that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And we rise to sing our response. The Holy Gospel, which serves as the basis for the sermon, is written in the fourth chapter of St. Mark, beginning at the 26th verse. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, The kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground. He sleeps and rises night and day, and the seed sprouts and grows, he knows not how. The earth produces by itself first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. But when the grain is ripe, at once he puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. And he said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God or what parable shall we use for it? It is like a grain of mustard seed, which when sown on the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, 
it grows up and becomes larger than all the garden plants and puts out large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them without a parable, but privately to his own disciples, he explained everything. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. We confess the Christian faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The hymn of the day is hymn 736. You may be seated.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite you to open your Bibles with me to the Gospel of Mark, chapter 4. In the Pew Bible, this is found on page 998, and I'll read our Lord's words again in verse 26. And Jesus said, The kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground. And let us pray. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, you have implanted in us uh, the gospel and by your Holy Spirit have caused faith to spring up in our hearts. We pray that that faith which we confess with our lips, we would live out in our lives, trusting you day by day, even when we aren't seeing things happen in the way that we had hoped or as quickly as we think they should. Give us patience, give us peace, we pray, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The story is told that when Martin Luther was asked one day, Dr. Luther, what do you do on Sundays after you're done preaching? Luther's response was, I go home, drink good Wittenberg beer, and let the gospel do its work in the world. And it's that kind of a, an attitude, I think, that we see at least expressed in the first of the two parables that we see here. That finally, you put the seed out there, the seed of the word, and let then that seed grow as God wills it. That can be kind of hard for us at times uh, because we become impatient. We want to see growth now. It's like we, it's like we take our planter out and, and one day and then the next day we're following with the combine. And it's just dirt. And as such then, as Jesus is instructing his disciples, he's reminding them that this little band of brothers, so to speak, this is whom God will take from this small group and by the power of his word and spirit will expand to provide shelter for millions throughout the ages. And so he compares then the kingdom of heaven as it is as a man should scatter seed on the ground. Jesus likes using that scattering of the seed imagery because he used it earlier with the parable of the sower. But this is the simple analogy of a farmer doing his farming thing. He is scattering the seed on the ground, and life goes on as normal. Verse 27, he sleeps and rises night and day, and the seed sprouts and grows. He knows not how. The thing is, he doesn't need to worry about it. If you've planted good seed, you don't have to fret over whether there will be growth. There will be. And as such, then, uh, he goes about his normal duties day and night. He, he goes to bed at night, rises up in the morning, carries on his work. He has planted the seed, and now it's up to God then to bring about the growth. And the phrase, he knows not how, is significant in the sense that today we can scientifically explain the germination of a seed and the process that it goes through. Yeah, but how? Think of a remarkable thing the seed is. And it all just evolved by accident? Give me a break. It is truly a marvelous work of God that something that, is, that by itself can do nothing when it is planted into the ground and receives the water and the nutrients and the sun can spring up in, uh, into a plant of some kind to provide food or shelter or beauty. And this is all the handiwork of God. And part of living life on big scale or even in the little things is learning how to trust our Savior and know that he is with us and that he is working his good will in our lives through his word as his word takes root in our lives. And so the earth, he goes on in verse 28, the earth produces by itself first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. There's this natural growing process that takes place as you see that which you have planted into the soil start to pop out of the soil and then start to grow and grow and grow. And when the grain is ripe, at once he puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. So the word grows in the church in ways that we don't always recognize. We see the smallness too often of our congregations or how we're getting more gray hairs in church than we are young people 
or we fret that because we aren't as big as St. Gizmo's Lutheran Church in the city, that somehow we're insignificant or God does not pay attention to us or care for us, and we would be completely and totally wrong. St. Paul talks about the fact that God, who did not spare his own son, but freely gave him up for us all, he knows how to provide other things that we may need. And so with the church, Jesus says, wherever two or three are gathered in my name, there I am among them. We tend to be over-impressed by largeness, bigness, and all kinds of programs. And frankly, I think we tend to try to help God out a little bit in the church. We come up with new programs or new ways of doing things or, or trying to, to say, well, you know, Bible study, we don't need to do that. We need to have some kind of spectacular program. Yeah, you might get backsides in the pews through these things, but if it's bad seed, you're not going to have a good crop. And the Lord's word is good seed. His means of grace are what he says will bring growth. It may be not growth in numbers, but growth where it counts in the soul. I um, had a friend who years and years and years and years and years ago um, was an elder at another Lutheran church. And his pastor had introduced a stewardship program that he wanted the congregation to undergo. And as my friend is reading through this, he says, Pastor, this is all law here. There's, there's no gospel whatsoever for the motivation. And the pastor looked his elders in the eye and said, frankly, gentlemen, the gospel does not work. Without the gospel, we've got nothing. Without the fact that Christ died for our sins, our only motivation to do anything is the whip being, being flipped at us. But when we focus on Christ and understand that he is the kingdom of God and that his ruling reign has already begun and he is at work in his Christians, whether they are a thousand member congregation or just a few dozen. It's the same Holy Spirit. It's the same word. It's the same absolution. It's the same supper. It's the same baptism. It's all the same. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all, says St. Paul. He doesn't talk in terms of the numbers. He talks in terms of the source, Christ, Christ alone. And so the word gets proclaimed. We entrust it to God. We carry out our vocations that God has given us. We pray that by the power of the Spirit, that word will continue to spring up and produce fruit in our hearts and in our lips and in our lives. And that final parable of the mustard seed, uh, starting at verse 30, he said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God or what parable shall we use for it? It's like a grain of mustard seed, which when sown on the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Just this little tiny thing. And yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes larger than all the garden plants. It's said that a mustard seed, when it, when it grows up, can actually get to the height of 10 feet. And this from this tiny little seed. And you really understand that in the context of Jesus speaking to his disciples, the world is looking at this little band of men and this itinerant preacher as insignificant and nothing, especially after this preacher was crucified. It's worthless. It's nothing. It's insignificant. It's, and yet, Jesus said, unless a seed is planted and dies, it bears no fruit. But if it does die, it will bear much fruit. And so, yes, Jesus died, and he was put into the grave. And he rose victoriously from the grave. And from that point on, in those few followers of Jesus, the world has been taken by storm. And millions, if not billions, will be with us together in heaven sharing eternal life. And it came from something that seemed so insignificant and so unimportant to the world. And, and when, um, when it is sown, it becomes larger than all the garden plants, puts out large branches so that all the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. 
this tree becomes a home. And the tree of the, of the church, the tree of the word, is our home. We prayed that, you know, may we read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest your word, O Lord. May that indeed be the case, that his word is planted in us, that we learn patience, knowing that our Lord is the one who will bring about his will and how he wants his seed to grow. And we can simply, after we hear the word and receive his gifts, go home, drink some good Wittenberg beer, beer, Wittenberg beer if you like, or not, and let the gospel do its work in the world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. And the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep each of your hearts and minds in true faith to life eternal, amen. We continue now with the prayer of the church. In our prayers, we pray for Pastor Randy Lett, who is recovering from open heart surgery, for Rusty Ross and his wife Julie, as Rusty's health is deteriorating fat, fairly quickly. We also pray for Amanda Matalski, who is awaiting biopsy results, for strength and healing for Amanda McCray, Annette Harbin, and Jean Ruprecht. We also give thanks to God for Jean and Ethel Ruprecht as they celebrate their 62nd wedding anniversary and our prayers of sympathy for the family of Don Burkhart, who passed away this past Wednesday. At the conclusion of our prayers, we continue then with the service of the sacrament. Let us rise for prayer. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we are, as human beings, really insignificant in light of the vast universe that you have created. And yet, O oh Lord, in humility, your Son humbled himself, taking on our flesh and nature to bring about our salvation, even humbling himself to death on a cross. And yet, O oh Lord, in that small seed that was planted 2,000 years ago, the tree of your church has grown and has spread throughout the world. Yes, there are times where your church numerically is larger and at other times smaller. There are times when your church grows through ease and other times great pressure, and yet, O oh Lord, your same Holy Spirit working through your word continues to bring hearts uh, to faith and ready them for the harvest at that last day. We pray that you would keep each of us faithful, that we would not become impatient at expecting and, and awaiting you to act quickly or expecting large numbers to prove that you are at work, but let us simply be faithful in the calling that you have given to us as your Christians and live day by day in the comfort of knowing that our Lord is carrying out his work in the world. Be with Randy as he is recovering from his heart surgery. We pray it went well and that he will recover quickly. Be with his family as well as they will prepare to bring him home and to help him recover. We thank you for those whose vocations are uh, able to, to bring us health once more. And so be with him, we pray. We pray for Rusty that you would be with him as his health is declining and be with his wife, Julie. Comfort and strengthen them. We pray if it is your will that his condition would improve, but we commend him to you knowing that what you ordain is always good. Be with Amanda Matelski as she awaits her biopsy results. We pray that the tests will be negative, but if they turn out positive, help her and the family to deal with it day by day. Be with Amanda, Annette, and Jean as they recuperate Bless them day by day so that they would be strengthened in body. We praise you, O Lord, that you have blessed Jean and Ethel with 62 years of marriage and pray your continued blessing on them in the years ahead. Comfort the family of Dawn Burkhardt as you have called her soul out of this life, that they would be comforted with your presence and with the assurance of the resurrection. And as we celebrate Father's Day tomorrow, we are thankful that you are our dear Heavenly Father. And we are also thankful for our godly fathers who have loved us and model the faith to us. Bless the fathers of young children that you would give them patience and strength to be good men for, for their children and again to lead and to guide them to Jesus. In all these things, dear Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment, you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy, you promised salvation by a second Adam, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen.
We now rise for the Nunc Dimittis. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming, we may, together with all your saints, celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen.